Hare Krishna, we are very fortunate today. Today's class is given by His Grace Pran Govinda Prabhu. Uh, Prabhuji, are you there? Yes, Mother. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my humble obedience. Hare Krishna, please accept my obedience. All goes to Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for your association in the call. We are reading Chaitanya Charitra Amrita, Madhya Lila, 24 chapter 283 onwards, Prabhuji. Please take over the call, Prabhu. Thank you, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Binda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Binda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Binda Hare Krishna, I'd like to welcome all the listeners to participate in this beautiful description of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's explanation of Atmaram verse. Chaitanya Chaitamita Maddalila chapter 24. <coughs> the title is the 61 explanations of Atmana verse. And we are serving today with text 283 and onwards, I believe. Yes. The verse goes, begin with like this. A aro tin ortho gananate pailo. এই দুই অর্থ মিলি ছাব্বিশ অর্থ হইল ইট এপিয়ার্স লাইক আনটিল নাও টোয়েন্টি সিক্স এক্সপ্লেনেশন অফ দ্য ওয়ার্ড আত্মা রাম দু ওয়ার্ড আত্মা এন্ড রাম আত্মা মিনস Essentially, we think Atma means the soul. Soul means spirit. Spirit means conscious being, not consciousness only. Conscious being. Consciousness does not exist by its own right. <clears throat> conscious being. And Rama means person who is experiencing the pleasure, happiness, uh, in a many levels. So... Here, Srila Prabhupada translated, in this way we have found three more meanings. <laughs> Very interesting. Srila Prabhupada is putting himself, uh, as Mahaprabhu is explaining in Mahaprabhu's group, uh, he says, in this way we have found three more meanings, as the Prabhupada has found also with the group. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining. Combine this with the other meaning and the total number of meanings add up to 26 in all text 2284 another artha means import Suna here, Jaha, which are Thero Bhandar, storehouse of knowledge, means you can draw meaning of the, from the storehouse of uh, knowledge. Stule, grossly, Stule, like uh, this physical body is also gross body. Gross doesn't sound good in American culture. Um, Gross sounds like a gross, bad. <laughs> but uh, gross means physical elements also. So in this case, tule means grossly. Dui artha, two meanings. Sukshme, sukshme in a sense that like uh, when you talk to someone, you cannot see their intelligence or their mind, but when they speak, you can 
uh, have some idea about the intelligent in mind. Means something it cannot be perceived with the physical senses. That's called sushma. Sushma, uh, subtle import. Bhattrisha, 32, prakara varieties. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Sami Prabhupada. There are there is yet another meaning which is full of variety of imports. Actually, there are two gross meanings and 32 subtle meanings. Here, the idea of gross in a sense that we can grasp. If you say, Something you can perceive through your senses uh, grossly, then it is tula. When you say bidi bhakti, raga bhakti, bidi bhakti in a sense that you will be able to perceive. Raga bhakti is internal intention more than external um, exhibition. So that's why the, these are um, uh, two different ways of approaching. So Parpur Prabhupada writes, the two gross meanings refer to regulative devotional service and spontaneous devotional service. There are also 32 subtle meanings under the headings of regulative devotional service. There are 16 meanings. A servant of the Lord as his personal associate, a personal friend, three, personal parents or similar sub superior, four, a personal beloved, five, a servant elevated by spiritual cultivation, six, a friend by spiritual cultivation, seven, parents and superior devotees by cultivation of devotional services. Eight, a beloved wife or female friend by cultivation of devotional service. Nine, a mature devotee as a servant. Ten, a mature devotee as a friend. Eleven, a mature devotee as a parent and superior. Twelve, a mature devotee as a friend. Fifteen, no, thirteen, an immature devotee as servant. 14, an immature devotee as a friend. 15, an immature devotee as father and superior. And 16, an immature devotee as a beloved. Similarly, under the headings of spontaneous devotion, there are also 16 various associates. Therefore, the total number of devotees under the headings of regular devotees and spontaneous devotees is 32. And whoever listening in the audience, I'm sure you grasp it, the whole purport. <laughs> Even for me, when I read this morning to prepare, after coming back from the temple, we have a morning class here, Bhagavatam in Alachua. And then uh, I came to prepare when I read this, I myself got thought about it. It's like, wow. It's like a, uh, difficult to remember these 16 types, and then you uh, multiply it twice, so two for the 32 types. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to go further because there's so much information. We want to, as uh, I mentioned many times, we want more Krishna experience than Krishna explanation. But if we cannot grasp this, how are we are going to go further? So I'm not, I'm going to stop right there. In this part, I'm going to focus. Because to me, Prabhupada has given so much what, uh, if, if it was not Ishkan society today, what if each of us tried to do individually, he has done with his comes. 
That is, he took the essential elements of this Vedic culture, Chaitanya Chaitamita, the Bengali uh, expression of uh, different division. Uh, when Mahaprabhu verbalized through a language uh, called Bengali, even that is not a Bengali like a regular Bengali. It's a more of a very uh, upper class. Uh, because sometimes you read Chaitanya Chaitanya to the common Bengalis, they have no clue what you just read. Even though they are Bengali and this is also Bengali. It's a very high class, poetic format, uh, Mahaprabhu's expression of his um, beautiful narration that uh, he's giving to Sanatan Goswami Pad. And Prabhupada is so mercifully, he's so genius. He lay in that he was true to the original, yet he made the changes necessary for it to flourish within English-speaking English -speaking culture concept. So I'm going to invoke the Marcia Prabhupada and then we'll start explaining this. Om Ajnanati Mirandasa Yenanjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tashmai Sri Guru Venama Sri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamahyam Tadati Shapadantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Sri Jutapada Kamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavangsha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathanitam Tam Sajeevam Saddaitam Sabadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhanitam Sya Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Samini Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunnavadi Paschata Dejatarine Bancha Kalpa Taruvesha Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Patita Nampa Vanibhu Vaishnavibhu Namo Namo Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Sri Adaita Galadhar Smashai Gaura Bhakta Binda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Ram or Ram or Hare Hare. I like to pay my respect and grateful attitude <coughs> to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, whose busy parents day was yesterday. I gave class in the temple. And I studied a little bit about his contribution in Mahaprabhu's movement. And when I see Prabhupada's purport, it's almost both are one, <laughs> looks like, very unique. So like father, like son in America, they call. That Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur, in his own Anubhasya, uh, this purport that Prabhupada gave, it's actually more or less translation of Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur Anubhasya. And it's so wonderful. But when we read it, there are three ways we can see these purports. One is, we can overall look in the whole picture of the chapter of Atmaram verses, how this 61 explanation will come. And then we can say, okay, this fits here. Uh, today, the discussion is 32, meaning of Atmaram word. Okay, so this fits, and then you can discuss on that. You can also take part of the purport 
and find a relevant to other part of Chaitanya Chaitamita or Bhagavatam and amplify or mag magnify that concept. Or you can just focus on this purport itself and just break down and grasp it and see in the GPS map, go to your devotional uh, path, where we are, where am I, fit in this. So if you look at it, here Prabhupada explaining in English so nicely, 16 category types of devotee. Now, it is not something very easily to be found. And we, we must always follow our thinking, align with the devotional principle that chalked out by Rupa Goswami Pad and our Acharya that gave, Vishana Chakuti Thakur that gave, nectar of devotion, nectar of instruction. We should not go other, uh, on our own inference. Why? Because we may commit offense. We may get bewildered and we may not see any advance, uh, legitimate, substantial advancement. So first of all, here, explaining, um, let's see, let me go back here. Okay. First explanation is, the Prabhupada gave the translation. It says there is a two types of devotee in our language. One is Bhaiti Bhakta. One is Raga Bhakta. Oh, first of all, what is Bhaiti Bhakta? We are hearing this for decades. Now it's a kind of sometime we need to reflect. What is Bhaiti Bhakta? Do you feel, in a practical sense, do you feel you are practicing this Krishna consciousness daily sadhana, like offering the food before you eat, you get up in the morning, you chant, you do arati, you go to work, and you come back, but you linking the work. Do you feel as a, a, a duty bound? Do you feel uh, fear bound? Like, 9-11, I remember I was in San Diego and 9-11 incident took place. Oh my gosh, everybody stopped everywhere all over the country within a few hours. And next one month, every churches, temple, synagogue, mosque is always packed with the people because majority people move by the fear. It's a fact. When you move by the fear, bottom line is, Bhaiti Bhakti. That's in Sanskrit uh, or Indian language, you can say Vedic language called Bhaiti Bhakti. But the Bhaiti Bhakti is not, according to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Prabhupada's mercy, Bhaiti Bhakti is not our ultimate sadhana. Our purpose that we follow Bhaiti Bhakti because of my condition but there is a bridge connecting from Bhaiti Bhakti to Raganuga Bhakti. And that bridge means developing a love, a genuine, pure sentiment, feeling, experiencing what we are doing, things we do every day, why we do. When you apply that intelligence, then you will contemplate, and you'll reflect, and you'll eventually start moving towards the devotional process with a feeling. That feeling, when it matures, is called Raganuga Bhakti. So, in this translation, it says there is yet another meaning, which is full of variety of import. Actually, there are two gross meanings. Two gross meaning means there is a Bhaiti Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti in that sense. So Bhaiti Bhakti, uh, as we understood now, that out of fear, out of duty, out of responsibility, out of uh, 
obligation. People do things every day all over the country. Well, I have to work, otherwise I cannot pay the bill. Uh, this is the, these are all in, in that sense, uh, that category of Bhaidi. But when you apply in the, the spiritual path, it's called Bhaidi Bhakti. You chant Gayatri three times, otherwise I'll not follow my Guru's instruction. But when you know the deep meaning of the Gayatri, you want to. Uh, that feeling is required. So when the feeling matures, then it's called Raganuga Bhakti. Now, in the material world, Raga, Raga, Raga means uh, feeling. The material, materialistic people that has, <laughs> we're not talking about that feeling in spiritual path. What's the difference? Difference is like a, I'll give you an example of, okay, I'll come back to give that example. But first, I'm going to break it down. There's a two. So the Bhaidi and Raganuga. And then now Prabhupada break it down to Bhaidi into 16. And at the end, last line, he says, therefore, the total number of devotees under the headings of regular devotees and spontaneous devotees is 32. So if we see this, this 16, you multiply two uh, by spontaneous. Uh, Bhaidi means regular devotee. Uh, headings of regular devotees and spontaneous devotee means Raganuga Bhakti. Okay. Now, in this 16, Bhaiti Bhakti, there is a one, two, three, four group, I see. One group is, first is Parishad Bhakta. Parishad Bhakta, then second is Sadhan Siddha Bhakta. Third is Jatarati Sadhaka. And fourth is Ajat Roti Sadhaka. Then you can memorize the whole purport in your head whole day. First is what I said. First is Parishad Bhakta. Second is Sadhan Siddha Bhakta. Third is Jata Roti Bhakta. Fourth is Ajat Roti Bhakta. Now, those who don't understand the meaning of those words, I'm going to explain. Parishad Bhakta means they are accepted as an associate of the Lord. Sadhan Siddha Bhakta means through your endeavor you have achieved that position of Rati. Jata Rati Bhakta means you already uh, have, you have matured your devotion towards Krishna. And Ajata means not yet. Immature. Prabhupada writes immature. Last four, you can see. And immature. Immature means you are practicing, but you don't have that relationship feeling for God. I mean, sometimes, to be honest, you go to temple, you see that some devotees just come, and they stare at the deity for five minutes, ten minutes. Sometimes they feel not to leave. And majority sometimes also come, they take a darshan, and they leave within a few minutes, as if they have seen God and now they're living. And of course, yesterday, Bhakti Jiddha Tagore's uh, appearance, uh, this appearance there, he says uh, to one of his disciples who came and he was giving lecture and he came straight forward to the deity. He passed by Bhakti Jiddha Tagore's audience of Harikata. And he paid obeisances to the deity and he walked out right in front of Bhakti Siddhanta Guru. So Bhakti Siddhanta Guru in, interrupted. He said, excuse me, sir. Uh, how was your eye message? Eye message. He's talking, he said, without hearing Harikata, Srinatam Sakata Krishna Punna Sravana Kirtana, unless you hear about God, unless you hear about Krishna, your relationship is not awakened. And without awakening your relationship, you don't have a feeling. Because you don't have a... Relationship means you have a position. You understand the position. Like, I'm looking through the window right now. There are so many cars there. But one is my car. I can see that car. And now if a truck passed by and he hit one car, and it's not my car. I feel mm, that's not good. 
but it does not go inside the feeling. It just uh, outside with the idea. It's not my car, but that eating that car was not good. But there's no feeling. Now, if that truck would hit my car, I'm saying my car means I have a relationship with the car. Every day I go to temple, every day I do things with this car. And if I don't have a insurance, and this is a new car without insurance, of course you can imagine probably in America, but in India they do. Without insurance they have cars. And it got crashed by this truck. Oh my God, I'm now not feeling well at all. Why? Because I used to, this car used to do so much service, so much uh, uh, comfort uh, to me to get destiny here, there, and now it's gone. What am I going to do? So I'll be depressed, I'll be probably crying or feeling sad, something like that. Why? Because there's a relation. Even with the material, that matters. Similarly, we have that relationship with this body. Imagine you magnify a million times the relationship with Krishna. So unless you have a relationship, there is no possession. And without possession, no genuine feeling. So that's, that's why our, it differentiates why there's the four types of here. Uh, Prabhupada put it in a, a different way. Then the last four, you can say immature, or jato, roti, means they are feeling. They are maybe hearing about Krishna, but not attentively, not rapt attention. Because they are hearing without rapt attention, it goes in the ear, it doesn't go to the heart. It's just barely touching to the surface. There will be relief, still has a benefit, but it has to go to the heart. What do you mean going to the heart means? Going to the heart means you thinking, your consciousness is changing, your thinking is changing, your awareness is changing, your feeling is changing. That is called going to the heart. What will happen then? When it goes to the heart, Parnaranda Pathadiya Ridimaji Pravisiya Barisha is Sudhaunupam. Rida Hoyte Bole Jibbara Griti Chale Sabdurupe Nachyanukam. That when holy name goes through the ear to the heart, means I am putting some feeling with chanting. That time it will drop some nectar. Nectar in a sense that it will dissolve our unwanted things slowly, slowly, and awaken our real substance. Why it is necessary? Because in the purple propas differentiate these four categories with these 16. So when you say, like for an example, somebody is doing Guru Puja to Prabhupada, we cannot see what that devotee is feeling for Prabhupada. We can see that person moving the chamara or peacock fan, one time, two time, three time, four time, five, six, seven. Okay, seven time is supposed to go around. Actually, Chamara has no rules. You can put as many million times Chamara. The others has a, some, uh, anyway, this is a Brahman discussion. But Chamara has no rules in the sense that anybody can do Chamara. Whole day you can do Chamara and pick up. So the point is that somebody can count how many times he's doing the rituals. But if the spirit is behind ritual, then it becomes spiritual means the feeling. Spirit means the feeling has to come. Then it becomes spiritual. So now I'm going to break down a little more on this topic. First of all, pure devotion means cultivation of activities for Krishna. Then we can literally remember this all 16 categories, and we can see where we are and how we are advancing. Are we advancing or not? You can have that. So first of all, the pure cultivation of activity for Krishna's pleasure is the pure devotion. And that pure devotion, we should remember, has a two things. One is your endeavor, and another is spiritual sentiment. Now, Kopil Dev says in the Bhagavatam, I mean, I hope it doesn't happen, but sometimes some devotee do feel, oh God, I have to go to Mangalarti to do the Arati. Oh, I wish I could sleep a little low. 
So the person feel pressure and is going there just to do the service. Actually, is it really helping? Well, in some extent, yes. It's becoming habituated. Eventually, you, like Prabhupada told to Gargo Muni, he didn't want to pay obeisances. Uh, he, Prabhupada said, just bow down and pay obeisances to the Lord. He said, I don't feel like. He said, just keep on practicing. So, but I don't feel like Prabhupada. What is the use of doing superficial? He said, Prabhupada said, if you do enough, it will become a habit. And if you go deeper to understand of you bowing to Krishna, then your false ego goes down. Then what happens? Then you will feel you have an innate nature in the heart that you are really missing him. You want to bow to his lotus feet. It's natural condition will arise. So practice eventually will lead to that. But I'm glad he <laughs> mentioned that he didn't feel like. So here are two things in bhakti. One is endeavor, one is sentiment spiritual sentiment. In the endeavor, you have endeavors in the stage of sadhana. That's why Prabhupada put this in the third category, sadhana. Then you have a karja rupa. Karja rupa means like endeavors that manifest as effect upon attainment of your feeling for the Lord. And then you have a two things also in the endeavor. One is something you have to um, desire, uh, develop a desire, conscious choice to do it, to perform it, and something also you have to voluntarily choose not to do it. Both prabriti and nibriti. In the devotional path, every day we have we were always thinking, I do, I want to do this, and I don't want to do this. What do you don't want to do? Like I don't want to commit offense today. I do not want at all. But be specific. I do not want to talk about prajalpa. I don't want to hear any gossip. I don't want to think even bad. So you, you have to choose. You have to talk to yourself, to your mind. Cooperate with me, my dear mind. Don't. No need to judge others. No need to criticize. No need to judge, especially. No need to curse, even if somebody says something harmful. So that's negative. You don't want to do. That's called nibritti. And prabritti means I want to cook such a nice way that Krishna will love to eat. I'm assisting Prabhupada. By Prabhupada's devotion, Krishna will accept. So I'll cook so nicely. I'll clean the things. Even Mother Josuda, she thinks every day, every moment. I took bath this morning, but this afternoon I should take bath because I want to have a clean body, clean clothes, so that my son does not get sick when he drinks breast milk or things I make for him. Even though in spiritual world everything is pure goodness, there is no dirt, there is no ignorance, there is no uh, three modes of material nature, but still the concept of endeavoring with that sentiment that I, I want to remain clean. So Mother Joshua end up of bathing every day two times, three times. Same as everybody else in Brajadam. It is eternally. We should. That's why all these develop. But there's a reason why they do. Just for pleasure of Krishna. And we have to just think about it more and more. We do things we do anyway. But why not we apply our intelligence with it? If we apply our intelligence with it, guess what happens? You can actually Hold in your consciousness when you apply with intelligence to meditate on Krishna. And if you meditate on that, why, how are you pleasing Krishna? That time, your unnecessary things called karma, ignorance, will burn to ashes, dissolve. What will happen after, at that time? At that time, you will actually... You will actually... Um, Feel happy, and that happiness will come. Okay. At that time, the happiness will definitely come to last forever. Nirantaram. And then, 
I'm going to discuss a little bit about the who are the Parishad. Uh, there's a, another category of Parishad. And then Jaturuchi or Jaturuchi. Jaturuchi. So Jaturuchi means one who has developed the love. Jaturuchi. And one who did not develop the love, they are called Ajaturuchi. So first of all, in, in, in Jaturuchi's case, Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you the sadhaka. What are the sadhaka? Uh, the first category. Sadhaka in a sense that you can check your heart. There is a verse, I remember Rupa Goswami Path says, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, I believe it's 2.1.276, the characteristics of sadhaka. Sadhaka means practitioner. Now, practitioner, there is a vast practitioner in this purport. We see that. But there is a basic practitioner means anybody comes and say, Hare Krishna, he deserves to have our respect in our mind. And Rupa Goswami says, anybody say Hare Krishna, immediately we should respect that person in our mind. But when somebody has become more advanced and he chant six down, took initiation and progressing, then we must pay dandavat, full dandavat. Just paying respect in the mind is not enough. And then when he goes further and he understanding the philosophy, he actually sincerely praying and trying to advance, that time he's called sadhaka. So sadhaka beginning from the stranger coming inside the temple or association, say Hare Krishna, that's enough. So sadhaka has a past, but ultimate sense, sadhaka maturity comes to this sloka. Utpanna ratayo samman, naivigna anupagata, Krishna sakshat krito jugga sadhaka parikittita. Means one whose heart is thinking, feeling, willing, that, uh, that uh, going towards Sri Krishna, and uh, he sees that he has a natural, he even surprised that, wow, I, I'm trying to think of Krishna. I'm trying to connect everything with Krishna. He's endeavoring, endeavoring. And this stage is very nice. His intelligence is required to keep connecting, keep connecting. But then when he comes to the stage where he will be surprised, wow, I was thinking of Krishna all this time for hours. I didn't even realize. It was so nice. I was thinking of Krishna. I was hearing this past I was meditating. You'll be surprised. This is a big change. So Sadhaka at that period, what happened? He become qualified to perceive the direct manifestation of the Lord. One who has not yet obtained complete freedom from all obstacles. In a sense, Rupa Goswami Padi is saying, that you are eligible to have a darshan of Krishna in your mind, in your heart, which reflects all mind. And you can have a very rapt attention to a pastime of Krishna. You could be like chanting and hearing so nicely and you remember if a pastime, Krishna and Radharani teasing each other, the Jogomaya creating, Krishna feels attraction to Radharani. He feels like, oh, they are all plucking the flower from the garden. He just went in and he says, Oh, I always wonder who is stealing these uh, flowers from this garden. Then uh, uh, you, you can hear these pastimes so rapt with rapt attention that you didn't even realize one hour passed and you just completely wrapped in that. Rapt means you don't think even to come out. You're like, <laughs> like a rapping. So, and Radharani is looking at him and Krishna says, who are you? Do I know you? And Radharani is singing, really you don't know me? When you hear this beautiful explanation of Gopal Tapuni Upanishad, and it's like you are so merged with this chanting and remembering this story. So you are also called sadhaka, but that doesn't mean that all your suffering uh, complete freedom from the obstacle is gone. Not necessary. Not necessary. 
you are eligible to see Krishna, you are eligible to be in rapt attention, but still some obstacle can be there. So that's called sadhaka. So we see here, out of 16 category, one, four sets are sadhaka category. And four sets are siddha category. So let's talk about what is siddha. Rupa Goswami Pada also gives. I remember those days, I think about eight, nine years back, no, maybe 12 years back, we used to study this, Bhakti Rasamrita Singh, the slokas. And it says, Abhigna Khila Klesa Sada Krishna Srita Kriya Siddha Suya Santata Prema Shoko Asyada Parayana Now when you are fully merged in activities, in awareness, uh, in chanting related to Sri Krishna, but you see, you are completely unacquainted with the impediments. Like for an example, temptation came. And you are not even aware that there is some enjoyment in that temptation. You are seeing it, you are not blind. Uh, I mean physically. But you are so much merged in Krishna, that uh, the temptation even is not intelligible. You don't even, you, you're not even fully aware. Even though you probably came with the experience in your early life of sadhana, but now you are in a stage like, you don't even see there is actually have, uh, some enjoyment in that sense, enjoyment in that temptation. So it doesn't even <laughs> penetrate. So <clears throat> at that time, when you are not acquainted with the impediments, so the material distress, in other words, is kind of, is there, but is not affecting you. Why? Because you are incessantly tasting the bliss of that love. Then you are called Siddha. So there is a subtle distinction between sadhaka, practitioner, and perfection or perfected uh, practitioners. There is a very subtle. Uh, what is the subtle? Maybe both are, some or other, uh, attracted to Krishna to a, of course, different degree. One is tasting it. But tasting means is the lower taste when it comes, you are not even aware that this has a, anything tangible that you need to think even. It's there, but it's not penetrating, or it's not even, um, uh, okay, I, um, let me put it this way. There's a difference between attack and defeat. When you feel attack, then you're still in a sadhaka stage. When you're defeated, by the last or the temptation, you are, you are in the lower part of sadhaka. When temptation could not even make an um, impressive uh, effect on you or, or endeavoring to make you allure for it, but you would not even buzz about it. You're not even, you're oblivious. Not not that uh, you're trying to escape from, no, you're, it's not even tangible, tangible of uh, uh, grasping or happiness. Then you're Siddha. So this is the bottom line. So Sadhaka and uh, Siddha, there is difference. Uh, this is our goal. And we want to all go to that stage. Now I'm going to discuss in a brief uh, what I remember long time back. That uh, in Santoros, in Santoros, in the which is beginning of our spiritual life, because here Prabhupada put very nicely, he says that, uh, let's see, he says, servant of the Lord as his personal associate. That means they are already became, they already became a personal associate. What do you mean personal associate? What does that mean? Personal associate means that generally there are four types of 
that's your us. Mm-hmm. Uh, servitorship, in, in, you can say. One is called uh, Adikrita. Adikrita means like a Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, even Indra. They are also devotees. Uh, they are not ordinary living beings. They are devotees. Uh, they are servants who are appointed. You know, they are not elected by the vote. Uh, I hope we all know that. They are appointed by Krishna. The Manu, Manu is like a governor. Or I'm just trying to draw a picture. Uh, if you run a state uh, or Krishna's kingdom in the material world, he has the Manu as a governor. And then he has a uh, commander chief who will be applying the things. So that will be uh, Indra. And then he will have a whole set of crew called demigods with him. There are six things in Krishna's government. And then, uh, so this way, they, these are called Adikrita. First consideration of associate. Second is Ashrita. Ashrita Bhakta generally those who take complete shelter, those who uh, formerly attached to the jnana, but now they are becoming devotee. We discussed in this chapter a uh, few weeks back. Then you have a seven star, like those who are fixed in the service. They are not going anywhere. And then the third category is called Parishad. Parishad means the attendance of the Lord in Dwarka including the skatriya, like uh, Uddhava, Daruka, Saptik, Satrajit, like this. Srutadet. And they serve Krishna in his administration like charioteer. Daruka, yeah, Daruka is a charioteer. Uh, is taking Krishna here, there in the chariot. Uddhava is like an advisor, minister, like this. And uh, among the Korova also, Bhishma Dev is there, Parishit there, Vidura is there. These are also Parishat. So these are the like example. When you read the purport and you think of those examples, then you can relate. Oh, I see. He says a servant. First thing he said, Prabhupada says, a servant of the Lord as his personal associate. Servant. The personal friend. Uddhava is a servant and a friend, both. Personal parents or similar superior, like Mother Devaki, Vasudev, they are also in that category. <clears throat> and then there is the Anuga Bhaktas. Anuga Bhaktas means those whose hearts are always deeply attached to rendering personal service to Sri Krishna. Hmm. Anuga Bhakta, you can say both in Dwarka, also in Bindavan. Because we are partial to Bindavan, we boldly say it. Even though we don't, it's not like that's how the movement is. No, this movement is for everybody. Every Bhakta can come, but we are little partial to Brajabhashit because that's why Krishna is completely pleased. Uh, so we, I'm going to give an example of Brinda Brajabhashit. Who are there? Like Raktaka, Patraka, Patri, Madhukanta, Madhubrata, Rasala. So many. Chandrahasa, Payoda, Bakula, Rasad. I remember the whole bunch of names. Like Raktaka, Patraka. They are like sometime <coughs> Krishna would <coughs> oh, sorry. Krishna would write a letter. He would write a letter. Sometime he write letter Rad, oh Rad, he, he could not even write the whole thing. He faints for a few hours or long time because his feeling to commune with his heart, from his heart with the beloved heart, takes a form or a shape of a word, letter. And he take a little straw and write it on the leaf. But it carries so much weight of feeling that he cannot even hold on to it, the pen, even his body. So he faints. And 
then upon seeing this then somebody wrap this uh, paper and give it to the messenger that messenger is called patraka these are proper put their name in letter of instruction actually raktaka patraka i was very uh, fascinated i always wanted to know i remember many many years back that's how we found out how what they do such a proper gave such a hidden secret in his purport i just love proper's purport is so fast but sometimes we can overlook because it's so fast so deep uh, we need to dig those things that he gives even this purport i mean i didn't even barely touch there's four categories as i mentioned so we are just trying to get some idea about this <clears throat> now comes to um another category so like for an example sukha with the sukha you have a four types of sukha as i mentioned we are going to only discuss brajabasi in order to relate to this purport so in brajaba in brajodam out of of course in the purport of 13 chapter 10 can the proper say there is innumerable coward boys so i don't know what is innumerable means there is no calculator in one sense another sense means um is beyond <laughs> imagination or beyond calculation <clears throat> these four types of coward boys they are actually four types by their feeling towards krishna in his in the relation so those who are sukha is mixed with the scent of some parental some protection and care for krishna who are slightly older than krishna even in spiritual world when according to your relationship you take birth and uh, of course uh, in spiritual world there is no really birth in a sense you are eternal but still when you come with krishna first time you meet uh, this is called vastu siddhi vastu siddhi means when krishna accept you as his friend as his lover as his whatever relationship you come in until krishna accept your endeavor with the devotee is progressing 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 it is pleasing krishna but still you are called sadan siddha when krishna accept you are no more sadan siddha you are vastu siddha from vastu siddha no chance to fall down so on the surit sukha means they have some kind of like they will go to the forest so if balaram is one of them balaram will come balaram say wait krishna don't go let me check what is behind this bush before you go because he feels like he need to protect him even though his friend like this but sridam he will not think like this say come on krishna you can do it you go he cannot think anything uh, above or less is like equal so then there is another group is called sakha those who are slightly younger than sri krishna like for an example krishna will be wrestling and those coward boy will thinking like oh he's probably tired he need to rest then jogoma creates the atmosphere where krishna starts sweating but krishna body doesn't have a force to sweat like this not like us uh, so he will be sweating then all of a sudden those coward boys will come they will make a beautiful bed for krishna with the leaves and they will fan him they will give him massage and all those boys in that category they take birth after krishna so they are little younger means they have a servitorship little tainted or you can say scent 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 like a perfume in you know, order a little scent of daisha mixed with their shrikha then there is another group on the same age as krishna but they take exclusive shelter of the attitude of shrikha 
They include like Sridam, Sudam, Dam, Bosudam, Kinkini, Stoko Krishna, Angsu, big list are given there. And they are, they cannot see Krishna uh, more than their position. Like for example, if Krishna will say, my father has a nine lakh cows, Sridam will say, so what? My father has 11 lakhs or 1 million 100 cows. Why are you bragging about it? They cannot give Krishna any position like that. Then, of course, I was looking at the next verse. Yeah, next verse has a very secret about these topics that how Krishna's supremacy above all incarnations. Anyway, so this, then there is another group. Uh, it's called Priya Norma Sakha. Priya Norma Sakha are superior in every way to the other three types. They are engaged in extremely confidential service and are proposed, uh, uh, sorry, possessed of a very special uh, sentiment. They are in a male body, but they have a connection with the Shakis means they allow, they, they arrange Krishna's meeting with the girls. It's rather any like this. And in some cases, like Sridham is not in that category. Because he's a sister of Srimati Radha. And it's in this case, even in a Rasagata Bichar, that Krishna even revealed his feeling. That's his brother. Uh, that's her brother. So he is a Sokka, but he is a Priya Sokka, not Priya Norma Sokka. Priya Norma Sokka means they are like a ma uh, matchmaker, you can say, in English slang way. Um, and they, they kind of uh, correspondence with uh, Lalita Visaka and arrange Krishna's meeting like this. So there is a variety. And that's why this whole um, conception of that two types, um, sorry, 16 types of Vaidhi Bhakta and 16 types of Raga Bhakta. And each category are subdivided again, Parishad Bhakta, Sadhan Bhakta, Jatoroti Sadhaka or Jatoroti Sadhaka. Now you can see where you are and where you want to be. So these are actually gradation events. And when you put those four types times two, uh, sorry, four types times four, so that's 16 times two, that's 32. That's what Prabhupada put the last line. Let me read it. Therefore, the total number of devotees under the headings of regular devotees and spontaneous devotees is 32. This is how comes 32 meaning of Atmarama verse. I'll end with this because there is unlimited discussion can be, but some idea about who are those 16 types and how it becomes 32 many. And if see, there is any question, comments, reflection, discussion. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mother. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Dhanda Pranam Prabhuji. Dhanda Vat Pranam. Thank you so much Prabhuji. It's uh, so much of fear, but it's still it's, uh, I couldn't say. It's, uh, it's a lot know. of techni technical. Yeah, a lot of technical. Yes. It's actually it's fast. A... That's why it says postgraduate. You know, Chaitanya Chaitanya is a postgraduate. means somebody has to be fully aware of this nectar devotion in order to grasp this. Otherwise, yes. difficult. Yes. Yes, Prabhu, but uh, still it's so nice. I can at least uh, get to know where we are in. And then I will explain nicely, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Uh, I just, uh, uh, as you said, do you, do you have any questions or comments for Prabhu? Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji, Koti Koti, Dhanvat Pranam, Sila Prabhupada, Sila Pradev Ki Chai. 
yes prabhu ji it is little hard for us but we hear one or two or three times still i i know that i am not going to much understand but such a wonderful class prabhu ji such a nectarian class thank you very much hari krishna thank you mata because prabhu ji our knowledge is very limited yes Hare Krishna Yes Prabhu ji Hare Krishna is there any question or comment for Prabhu ji Ah uh, Prabhu ji uh, can you explain a little bit more about that uh, Jataka or uh, Jataka bhakta you explain that first two but the uh, the second two last I could not understand the Prabhu Ajato is easy. Ajato means immature means I haven't uh, developed that feeling while I am chanting or doing things. I can relate that very easy because that's who I am, and I see myself. So it's easy to see. Okay, there is a immature devotee as a sadhu. Sometimes I, we feel like to be a. It would be nice to be coward boy or coward girl or. sometimes you hear damodar lila and you see krishna's baby and you are advancing but you feel like oh i want to give a hug to krishna i want to hold him on my lap and carry him so you feel like to act like a father mother or a friend so these are immature devotee as a servant as a friend that's how prabhupad put it last four and immature devotee as a beloved and, oh it would be so nice but there is a danger there is a one verse bhakti siddhan sutta ko says uh let me see if i can remember it says adhikaro nalabha siddha deho bhave viparjay buddhi janme shakti ro bhave if somebody does not have a eligibility adhikaro nalabha adhikar means uh, you are uh, like for example a, a husband wife can talk intimately but Uh, unmarried men and women should not talk intimately means they don't have a adhikar and husband wife can talk intimately because they have adhikar they have given to each other for a mutual respect and to grow so similarly there are some imitator in this world uh, lot <laughs> in uh, especially in the holy dhams unfortunately adhikar and alabbo um siddha deho bhave but they think yeah i like that idea shila prabhupad went one time to mayapur long building and, and there was a one uh, devotee um, on the roof of the long building uh, you know next to the staircase if you go to mayapur it's still there that building i, I went after 30 years this year <laughs> i saw that and there there's the one devotee he was jumping and so the story i heard that uh, robert looked through the window what is doing so they knocked the door and they opened so what are you doing so oh, i went to uh, one association um and this baba ji said i am a peacock in golok bindavan so i was practicing and robert was furious furious he says Gorgishadar Baba ji, this is what I heard. Gorgishadar Baba ji already explained this, and Bhakti Vinod Thakur actually wrote a song. Siddha deho diya binda mana majhe sabo. That first somebody has to chant, and this the power of chanting is so much. Vishaya Vishana le divani si hiya jalit jurai te na koi nu upay. All these verses are explaining that how. Uh, the purification takes place through the chanting and when somebody is uh, purely chanting and progressing he will come to a point where uh, he will uh, worship lord chaitanya mahaprabhu in a daisya ras no need to imitate any other rasa bhakti vin thakur clearly says and uh, when daisya daisya paripakke jobe jibe hridaye si madhur rasude murtiman hoy and when daisya paripakka means when daisya raso 
become mature towards Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then Mahaprabhu himself will arrange for us. How he will do? He will take us to that state of consciousness where our relationship intimately with Krishna will be revealed. And if somebody has a conjugal rasa, what's the big deal? Mahaprabhu himself is Radha Krishna together. He will reveal himself, he said. This is very nice. So Prabhupada said, this imitation is not good. So immature devotee can sometimes Im- Im- imitate and that's dangerous. That's dangerous. So that's the warning. So that's the last category. And before that, Jatarati. Jatarati means he has developed love. His relationship is very, and he acts on it. You can say, Bilamangal Thakur. He is in love with this boy who brought him to Vrindavan. And he is telling him story every day. And about Krishna. He sings. And this boy, now Bilamangal Thakur is blind. He is in Vrindavan. And this boy is appreciating. The boy says, I love this, the expression you are uh, feeling and expressing. I want to hear more. Then Bilamangal Thakur also asks him sometimes, tell me about Krishna story. And he tells some Krishna story. He hears the Krishna story. At one point, Bilamangal Thakur was very surprised. He says, oh my God, I came to Vrindavan, but I'm falling in love with this boy instead of Krishna. I feel more attraction towards this boy than Krishna. Because when this boy tells the story of life, this boy tells the story of uh, Krishna consciousness relation about Krishna, about the gopis, about the coward boys, about Brajadham, Mother Josuda. I feel so attracted. I feel like he's like touching my heart, melting my heart. And I feel so much. And he was so disturbed. And he cried and cried and cried. Then ultimately, of course, there was a nice scenery took place. And he realized that boy is none other than Krishna himself. That's called Jatoruchi, Jatorati. That mature devotee, wow. That time is the relationship. Oh, Krishna, you can escape from me. Uh, give me darshan just to have look. But Krishna was telling Radharani, don't go nearby. He can grab your feet. Sure enough, when Radharani went nearby, he grabbed the feet. You all know the story. But <laughs> Krishna, of course, gave him... Uh, his blindness he moved, but then he asked that to blindness to come back again because he wants to just hold unto these divine couples um, in his heart and nothing else he needs to see. So Bilamangal Thakur proved this mature state that how it works. He came from immature, now he's mature. When his maturity takes place, it was so much affected, so much affected. And his life was so successful. So these are the some examples. Are you there, Mata? Yes, Prabhuji, thank you very much. Okay. Thank for now. Ajana Gopi, are you there? Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Um, also, Prabhuji, you are telling that Sadaka, you gave the different category, Hare Krishna Prabhu? Yes, Mata. Uh, sadaka level, you also gave the uh, uh, different category, uh, Sadhana Bhakti or under the sun. Can you explain a little, uh, can you explain one, one more time, Prabhu? Uh, I could not hear the, that. Or well, have different level of sadhaka. I could not uh, get what he, when you were telling. The idea of sadhaka is a, a, because uh, terminology sadhaka, sadhaka, the one who has a goal and one who started practicing to achieve that goal. So one angle that anybody started chanting in a offensive state or namabhas means clearing stage proper translate means his offensive mentality 
is maybe there, but he's trying not to commit offense. And then one who really like kind of feel free gave up idea of offensive. So all three stage, all three stage can be called sadhaka. Uh, in one sense, because it's a past. Um, Definition that Rupa Goswami Pad gives, Utpana Rata is someone, Narivigna Anupagata, Krishna Sakshat Kito Jugga Sadhaka Porikitita. Means one whose aware, awareness or feeling, thinking towards Krishna has already manifested. Means he, he is feeling, now he can think of Krishna. He is aware the taste of water is Krishna. Smell of flower is Krishna. Now outside is sun is Krishna. The moon is Krishna. Like this, he is aware of Krishna's um, opulence, majestic aspect in his life around. And this is Krishna's maya. This is Krishna's material nature. This is Krishna's devotees. Some are accepted as a servant, some are don't accept as a servant, but still they are all servants. Some accept, some don't accept. So he doesn't see a uh, demon or anything in a sense. They are, some other is finding relationship. So they are all sadhaka. But when sadhaka gradually come to a point where his relationship is tangible, he can absorb in Krishna. How do you absorb in Krishna? You apply the intelligence. What I'm practicing? Why I'm practicing? Who recommended it? What's supposed to be the result? You have to have a faith, strong faith. Faith doesn't come from the sky. Faith comes from the association of those who have the faith, who lives on that faith. So with their association, their instruction, when your Guru said, chant Hare Krishna, you see, Jabataka Maharaj, after he been material, is so much struggle he went through. But does he give up? He is the same mentality when I met him in 79 in Mayapur. I was serving him. Uh, uh, was, he was like a constant preaching, glorifying Krishna, glorifying Prabhupada. He's like constant. So similarly, they are like fixed in the devotional path means they are empowered. When somebody keeps on going, it is not our opinion, it is the opinion of Mahaprabhu. Palijaga Dharma Nama Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Bina Nahetar Prabhartan Unless you have Krishna Shakti, you cannot go on uh, practicing. Not possible. And preaching. Not possible. And this movement is not based for new bhakta. Because this is a preaching movement. Preaching is not done by the new bhakta. Teaching is done by the Madhumadikari, means pure devotee. So this movement is for the pure devotee. Whether somebody is acting on that or, or trying to get into it, but some or other, this movement is based, made by Prabhupada on Madhumadikari platform, means preaching movement. So I think many considerations, means is sadhaka. This movement, all the members are sadhaka, period. So that's how the philosophy and the practical uh, devotional execution we based on the preaching movement we everything we do is for ourselves and for everybody else we are not selfish minded in anywhere in the in the Krishna conscious movement I'm traveling now this year more and I see everywhere this mentality is there they want to purify their own heart and they want to help purify others heart it's so kind. It's a, this is what preaching movement is. So they are called sadhaka. So sadhaka means that uh, two quality. One is that they can focus on Krishna. They can perceive the direct manifestation of Krishna. But not yet obtained complete freedom from all obstacles. These are the two qualifications. And Siddha is little different. It's maturity. What does that mean, maturity? Maturity means he's immersed in Krishna activity, Krishna-related things. And he's always constantly thinking how to make other Krishna conscious. He's always merciful. He's not even, at the same time, he's not even completely unacquainted with the impediments. 
or material distress. He's not even aware. He's there. It's like he's sick, but he's not even aware that he's sick. Sometime, of course, you know, in Mahabhagavat's case, like Prabhupada had a Rani nose. And <laughs> Madan Man Prabhu told me the story that Prabhupada in the uh, discussion, he said, so I have a, some emotional experience and my disciples sometimes think I have a runny nose, cold. <laughs> so it's funny because they get so much emotion. Uh, sometimes they feel like to cry. They try to like, um, how do you say, resist. They don't want to show up. So sometimes it appears like they have a more uh, cold or runny nose problem, but they don't. Uh, this is what Robert says. So like that, so many serious, sincere devotees in this movement. I hope devotees focus on the those devotees uh, preaching uh, lifestyle and appreciate, glorify, and participate in that instead of looking Maya's intervention in Krishna consciousness movement. Maya will be always intervening and creating all kinds of hotspots. But we have to live in a Krishna conscious society where Prabhupada given is pleasing Krishna, Vaishnavas. So this is the basic uh, difference between Siddha and Sadhaka. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much, Prabhupada. I have one question, but it's not related to the class, Prabhu. I was thinking mm. to ask you uh, in the morning. Uh, Prabhuji, actually when we offer the prasadam, we are supposed to honor the prasadam. But uh, sometimes what happens, uh, that mentality is not there to honor, you know. Uh, we, we just, most of the time, we enjoy the prasadam. Uh, means uh, how how we can take this, how we can develop that honoring prasadam, Prabhu? If you... If we think of the effect of the prasadam, look at Sarvam Bhattacharya, how strict he was in the rituals. When he get up in the morning, he must bathe, he would not do anything until he do his um, Gayatri and he would do all these rituals. But when Mahaprabhu came early morning after he became Hare Krishna devotee, and he told Sarvam Bhattacharya, he didn't even brush his teeth. He said, honor this prasadam. Immediately glorified prasadam. That prasadam is so merciful. It can purify the consciousness instantly. And then he took the prasadam. Now even I'm asking myself, would I just eat without brushing my teeth if I get up from the bed? Well, if Mahaprabhu comes, I better jump. I better learn this. That's what Sarvam Bhattacharya did. And it pleased Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Chaitanya says. Mahaprabhu was so happy that he gave up all this. Year. So prasadam, when we see the effect of the prasadam, that how many souls that actually got delivered just by honoring prasadam, more we see the effect and the purpose, and the, then automatically we'll slowly, slowly become aware and then we'll feel uh, slowly, slowly towards that, and we'll see the effect is more. You know, it's, it's interesting. It is not exactly like placebo or uh, medicine. They say, you know, whether you understand or not, medicine still works. Yes, placebo means whether substance is there uh, or not, but if you believe, it still works. Well, <laughs> we take from both sides that... Um, Krishna says in 24th chapter, 10th canto, he says, Getta, getta cha karmani, lokayam anutishtati. Vidusha karma siddhi set. Those who are vidusha, vidusha means those who are wise, intelligent, they think what they are doing, why they are doing. Krishna himself spoke this. He said, when they are aware of the result and the effect and their activity, why they do, for whose benefit, and who recommended this, and what will be the outcome, when somebody thinks like this, he gets highest benefit. So we take Krishna's opinion. So more we are aware what actually Prasad does. See, a lot of people cannot even comprehend how can rice, dal, uh, potato become transcendental. 
So if you give them in one sentence, well, Pattam Pusham Falam Tuyam, Jome Bhakta Prajat Siddhi Krishna says, if somebody has a devotion to purchase it, to cut it, cook it, that bhakti is carrying, and then offering it another bhakti, so both bhakti, Krishna says, he's taking, asnami. He says, asnami, the word asnami means I eat, literally. So Krishna takes. So we have to have a faith. That's one way to look at it. Another also, that uh, when Krishna is getting all these material things, how to understand this? Brahmarpanam Brahma Havit. Bhagavad Gita 4.24 explaining. That absence of conscious reality is the matter. So we don't offer matter to Krishna. Yeah. In Apple, we see there is a Rajagun, Tamagun, Sattagun. This is what's causing the matter. Apple is a matter or spirit? Well, it's a matter. Uh, because it will dissolve. It will have no existence anymore. And because uh, some part of the Apple we can see is uh, over-ripen, which is Tamagun. Under-ripen is Rajagun. Perfectly ripen is Sattagun. Okay. Then when we offer it, this mantra is so powerful, it creates an atmosphere where reality of consciousness is revealed. Then it transforms into Brahman. No more dead matter. It is now accepted by Krishna. Noeva Atmana Prabhu Nijo Lava Purna. Noeva Atmana Prabhu Nijo Lava Purna. Krishna says this. Yes, I don't need to eat this matter. And why? Uh, because the people who is going to offer, they have a contaminated heart. The whole material matter, Mahatattva, is contaminated. How anything is offerable? Not offerable. But, Karuna Vrinite. Karuna Vrinite. Karuna Vrinite. Prahlad Maharaj said this in 7th Chantra. The Karuna Vrinite. You are so merciful. He's speaking to Nishingadev. And Nishingadev is agreeing. Prahlad Maharaj is saying that yes, but you are so Karunama, you are Karuna Vrinite. Because you are merciful, you accept it. Even though you don't need it. So what do you do? You benefit those who offered you. So you think all those and you really look at the rice doll and say, this is prasad, this is transcendental. It's going to purify my consciousness. And I, I have to start developing. More we think about it, slowly, slowly it will become transcendental. You'll be surprised. It works. By the way, it works 100%. This process is 100% pure. I don't know. This is just a short variation. There's unlimited on prasadam. Are you there, Mother? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Danvat Pranam. Thank you very much. Is this Mother Anjana Gopika? Are you done? This is, this is Vrinda Gopika Prabhuji. Anjana Gopika oh, okay. is maybe went to pick that kid. So she is hearing but not, uh, not able to answer. Oh, I see. Okay. We end the class or more, more discuss? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for a very wonderful. Thank you. So we end the class now? Thank you, Prabhuji. Yes. yes. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for the answering all the questions. Thank you. Yes, Prabhuji. Pancha Kalpa Taru Vyasya Kripa Sindhu Vyayvacha Katita Nama Medya Vaishna Vipriyo Namunu Maha Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrindh Ki Jai Shla Prabhu Pad Ki Jai Shri Shri Chaitan Charitam Rath Ki Jai His Grace Pran Govind Prabhu Ki Jai All the listener Bhakta Vindha Ki Jai Thank you Prabhuji. Thank you Prabhuji. Dharvat Pranam Hare Krishna. Dharvat Pranam. Dharvat Pranam.